On the farm, it can be any number of things. It could be tainted irrigation water. It could be the practices of the workers, improper hygiene on their part, uh, improper application of a fertilizer. It's an animal manure, for example, or contamination uh, from wild or domestic animals uh, in the crop. As it goes into the packing environment or processing environment, a number of things can happen. You can have inadequate sanitation in that facility. Um, if it is a processed food, like a cooked food or a roasted food or something of this sort, they may not have an, an adequate temperature to kill a pathogen that's present. Um, or there could be bad practices by the workers themselves. Even in the distribution chain, we worry about things like the cold chain. If it's a refrigerated food being transported by truck, for example, did the refrigeration system work correctly? Or did that food get warm and cause organisms to spoil? Uh, and, or, and or are there sanitation issues with that con contaminated uh, container or truck trailer that might have cross-contaminated the food? Once it gets into um, a restaurant setting or at home, there are a number of things that we can do that may contribute to that problem. Uh, we've heard the term keep cold foods cold and hot foods hot. You really want to keep foods from spending too much time between about 40 and 140 degrees because that sort of lukewarm temperature is the ideal temperature for pathogens, for disease causing organisms to grow. Uh, we want to make sure that we practice good sanitation at home so we don't want to, for example, chop you know, raw poultry on a board and then chop our vegetables for a salad on the same board without, without a sanitation break in between. Um, and of course, if we cook our foods, we want to make sure that we thoroughly cook them. So any number of these things can, can contribute to and cause foodborne illness.